computerized lathe that uses the very latest system intelligence, designed basically, of course, to enable the apprentice or the trainee to be taken away from the hurly-burly of the shop floor to a proper training environment where he can play to his heart's content with a sophisticated, advanced, but relatively inexpensive machine without doing any damage until he's mastered CNC operation. It also avoids at the same time, of course, tying up uh, a very expensive CNC machine on the production line. Designed and built here at Brick House by Denver Machine Tools who have now built up for themselves a big international reputation for training lathes and it really introduces a whole new era in CNC training because it takes the mystique, if you like, out of CNC operation. Designed to be as user-friendly as possible. To that end, it's got this uh, five-inch VDU screen actually built into the control panel that takes you step-by-step page by page through the operations manual, backed up by this audio setup here, which uh, goes painstakingly, very sympathetically, more sympathetically than most instructors indeed, through every stage of the operation. Let me demonstrate that straight away by taking the role of the trainee and going through a very simple setting up operation. To return to page one, press five, then E. Five and E. Use this first page to enter the units you will be working in, for most of the program, by pressing the inch millimeter key on the function section of the keyboard. We should be working in millimeters. Keep pressing the key until metric units are indicated on the screen. Press the key with the two arrows in the downward direction to advance to the next page. Now you must select the format you will be working in for most of the program. This is the key below the inch millimeter key on the function section of the keyboard. Incremental indicates you will be working from the previous position and absolute from the datum lines which are taken from the center line on the X axis and from the end of the workpiece along the Z axis. Press the key until absolute format is indicated on the screen. This carries G code 90. Right, what next? Press the key with the two arrows in the downward direction to advance to the next page. Now you must enter the program datums. Press the key to the right of the incremental absolute key. Now key in the X value taken from the center line of the spindle as 15 millimeters. 15 millimeters and presumably enter. There we go. Enter this information into memory by pressing E. Right, that's now loaded on the machine. Now key in the Z value taken from the end of the workpiece as five millimeters. Five millimeters and again enter, I suppose. Again, enter this information into memory by pressing E. Right, let's leave it there. And as I said, you can see how slowly and sympathetically the information comes at the training. So all the time he is, as it were, in control of the situation. And that tape system can be used as flexibly as you like. You can use these headphones to make sure that if you're in a crowded classroom, you're not interfered with or interrupted by what's going on around you. An instructor can record his own tape so he can give more advanced information to more advanced students uh, with more complex programs. There's even a video off-take so the information on the VDU screen can be put on a larger screen again for a crowded classroom. Before we run a program, let's look at the lathe itself because, of course, uh, it has some very important characteristics. Very neatly laid out control panel, all touch tone in operation. This is the data input section. This is the programming function section of the keyboard. Manual control of the lathe itself for setting offsets. Also has the feed rate override, so you can increase or decrease the feed rate during the operation of a program. Stop start and emergency stop also controls the spindle speed which again you can increase or decrease while a program is in operation. Here we've got a little cassette drive so you can load programs from your pre-recorded library of programs or you can record the program you are at present inputting into the machine. As for the lathe itself, well each machine is fitted with these precision ball screws protected by these telescopic covers. Bit of a knack there to get those back. Uh, completely enclosed chuck guard of course. Chuck itself, self-centering, three-jawed, 
and the speed of the spindle is totally controllable, totally variable throughout the operation of the program. Here we've got this very neat multi-fix quick change tool post which can be used not only for turning operations but also for drilling and boring operations. And down here, just to complete the uh, space age feel of the machine, we've got this solar powered, no less, calculator. Not just a gimmick, because it enables the operator to carry out his calculations when he's programming the machine. Right. Now we've seen how easy it is to enter the program formats. Let's go on to something rather more complicated. Say, for example, we wanted to go through a screw cutting program, putting a 1.5 millimeter pitch thread onto a 10 millimeter bar. Here we've got a 25 millimeter diameter bar. Obviously, we can't take all that metal off in one cut. We're going to have to go through a do loop. Let's see, with all my inexperience, if I can manage a do loop program. Right, press the do loop function button. Immediately ask for the count. In this case, that means the number of cuts. We want 10 cuts, each of them being 0.75 of a millimeter. We want them, of course, to be incremental. Now, let's enter the depth of cut on the x-axis. We want minus 0.75, as I said. On the z-axis, we uh, don't need any change since we're not moving along the bar at all. Feed rate, 1,000 uh, millimeters a minute, I'm told, would be appropriate. Tool number is number one. Spindle speed, 800 RPM, again, I'm told, would be the appropriate figure. Now, the next two point-to-points -point would take the tool 30.5 millimeters along the bar and return it to its starting position. That really brings us to the end of the do loop. Bring the program to an end. We can now execute that. Let me unlock the emergency stop button. Make sure